Well, good morning. If you are joining us for the first time, my name is Mark Peach. I'm the pastor here at City Presbyterian Church, and I welcome you. Also, if you're a regular attender, if you've been tuning in, um, uh, I welcome you as well. I'm glad you're with us this morning uh, on this Pentecost Sunday. Just so you know um, where I'm coming from this morning, I started out this week um, preparing a Pentecost Sunday sermon from Acts chapter 2, but I realize that there are times to improvise and there are times to have a change of plans. I also believe that there are times in which it is good and right to lament. Now is one of those times, not just because of the despair that has come from the coronavirus, but the despair that comes from injustice. Because of last week's murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis, I felt the need to speak on biblical justice. So today we are going to look at Amos chapter 5 verses 18 through 24 that was just read for us. And we're going to look at what it says about injustice and about the justice of God. Now Amos can be found in the Old Testament. It comes right after the books of Daniel and Hosea, and it is one of the minor prophets. Now, because others have done a lot more work on this passage and on this book than I have, or uh, and even on this issue, I've relied on a sermon from Pastor Duke Kwan in Washington, D.C. He gave uh, a few years ago to help me to bring about structure to what I want to communicate this morning uh, from this passage. But I also, I'll also try to apply these verses to our current situation. Let me pray for us as we look further at God's Word. Oh Lord, we come to you this morning and many of us are heavy-hearted. Um, many of us are uh, discouraged. Many of us are angry. Uh, many of us are confused about what's going on in our world. Lord, wherever we're coming from, please, would you speak to us this morning? Would you speak it to us to help us to know you more, to help us to know your grace and your love, your justice more? And would you draw us to yourself in such a way that we are, are uh, drawn to, uh, to you in such a way that we live out our faith faithfully in the world, serving you, following after you, proclaiming you. So Lord, in my weakness this morning, would you speak through me, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, speak to us. This we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, as we turn our attention to Amos, I think the following words from Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech are appropriate. He says this, There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, When will you be satisfied? We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. Then he goes on and he lists several injustices. And then King says this, No, no, we are not satisfied, and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. One scholar says this verse uh, Amos 5.24, let justice roll down like mighty waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Uh, so one scholar says this was King's favorite uh, verse of Hebrew poetry in the Bible. And perhaps Dr. King loved this verse because the book of Amos presents us with um, the issue of justice. Now, there are um, a lot of churches that avoid talking about injustices, such as violence against black bodies and black lives. But we refuse to do that as a church. We are going to talk about injustice. Injustice that arises from sin and living in a sin-broken system. And we are going to talk about justice, which arises from the very character, the very person of God. So, what does Amos teach us about justice? 
Well, Amos teaches us a few things, a number of things, but here are a few. He teaches us what justice is. He teaches us what hinders justice. And he teaches what hope, the, the hope that justice brings. So first, what is biblical justice? This section of the Bible is, it's an uneasy section of the Bible. It's a lament. It's a lament. What is happening here in Amos? Well, in the verses leading up to uh, this lament, we are told that the prophet Amos, uh, by, by the prophet Amos, that judgment is about to come to Israel because they have brought, uh, become a nation of injustice. At that time, doing what is good and right was being hindered by leaders in power. And justice is coming because as verse 11 says, verse 11 is not printed there for you, but verse 11 says because, uh, it, that just, justice is coming because people in power trample on the poor and exact taxes of grain from them. Justice is coming because the powerful are the ones benefiting from the poor and from the marginalized. Now, verses 12 and 13, again, they are not printed for you. I wish I would have printed them for you this morning, but 12 and 13 say this, um, For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins, you who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and turn aside the needy in the gate. The passage points us to different kinds of uh, injustices. It points us to uh, different kinds of injustices, but it also points us to a call to do justice. Verse 15 says, hate evil and love good. So what does it mean to love good, love or hate evil and love good? What does it mean to do justice? Well, uh, let's get at this by asking the question, first of all, of what is justice? Most people hear the word um, justice and we might think of about punishment uh, for breaking the law, right? But this word in the Hebrew means much more than that. The word in Hebrew is mispot, and this word means to treat people with equity, equ equity and generosity. Justice in the Bible means giving people due what, what is due to them, as people made in the image of God with inherent dignity and worth. Now listen, no image bearer of God should lose their life the way that George Floyd lost his life, or the way that Breonna Taylor lost her life in her own home, or the way that Ahmaud Arbery lost his life on a jog, or by any other many ways that black and brown people have unjustly lost their lives, unjust and in disgusting ways. Injust, injustice against marginalized people. Furthermore, we can see the health disparities among uh, people of color. We see it during this coronavirus. Those who are hospital and die from the coronavirus are disproportionately black and Latino. This is due to the lack of health care, the lack of good uh, living conditions, good work conditions. This is an injustice. What has led to this kind of injustice? What has led to this kind of injustice? Well, we have two viruses in our country today. One is the coronavirus, and the other is the virus of white supremacy. And neither the knee on the neck of George Floyd the scream of Amy Cooper in Central Park, nor our own complacent hearts have been successfully quarantined from this deadly infection. So, today we grieve, we lament, and we cry out to God. 
But biblical justice also calls us to action. It calls us to care for those who have been denied dignity and denied equality in society. As one of my pastor friends uh, said this past week, stop writing about dead black people on Facebook if you don't even help the living black people. So biblically, who is it? Who are those whom are called, who are, we're called to do justice to? It includes all, but it especially includes the orphan, the widow, the foreigner who are made up of racial minorities, immigrants, and the poor. We see this all through scripture. More than anybody, Christians ought to be people of justice. This is uh, biblical. We see it throughout Scripture. So, what does it look like? What does justice look like? Duke Kwan, again, he puts it this way. Justice includes protection of and provision for the most vulnerable and most marginalized in society. Kwan goes on to give examples, and he says this. So justice means that things like seeking reform for our criminal justice system so that the system does not overassume the criminality of young black men. This is the work of justice. But this also means mentoring young black men so that they don't end up in the criminal justice system in the first place. Seeking justice. Seeking justice also uh, involves political action, but it involves relationship as well. It involves relationship. So how many of us are, uh, how many of us know our vulnerable neighbors? How many of us are caring for our vulnerable, vulnerable neighbors? What are other ways of doing justice? Um, other ways of doing justice, it could be mean advocacy for immigrants or refugees through agencies like, uh, like here in Salt Lake, the International Refugee Committee. But it also means getting to know your immigrant neighbors. It also means speaking up, speaking out. It means speaking up when someone is falsely accused of something based on their ethnicity. It means speaking up. It means striving to confront those employers who are not giving women equal pay, but it also means honoring the women in your life with dignity and respect. This is biblical justice. But where does this kind of justice arise? Well, Grace Jinson Kim says, we know what justice is when we know who God is. We know what justice is when we know who God is. Justice for the most marginalized from, come, arises from the very character of God. See, God is the father of the fatherless. He is the defender of the orphan and the widow. And listen, the central event in the biblical storyline shows us the God of justice as the one who through Jesus Christ, became poor and marginalized so that through his poverty, we become blessed, blessed in relationship with him. So what might it look like for us to really know not just the mercy of God, not just the compassion of God, the grace of God, but to know the justice of God? Now I'm learning a lot about this myself, and I don't have all the answers. But I do want to challenge us, challenge us at City Press, to really consider how, what it would look like to collaborate with others for the good and flourishing of our city, for the good of this place, the, the good of this place that God promises to redeem. I don't know all the answers of how to go about that, but I hope that we can begin thinking about it more. So how do we begin to do the work of justice? How do, we, how do we live out justice in the world? In this passage, 
um, when we come to verse 24, we have these beautiful words in Scripture. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The justice that flows out from the people of God can only f f flow out when you know God and the abundance of his grace. This is what leads to equity and generosity. When God shows up in your life, when God shows up in the lives of his people, justice flows out. So, what is Amos getting at? What Amos is getting at is that, ju in, that justice characterizes God, the people of God. That it should be a part of who we are. Grace flows from the very heart of God into us, to us in order that it flows into the lives of other people. That is what God does in the life of his people. But it, this is hard, right? It's easier said than done. There are barriers to pursuing justice. Now I want to talk about barriers to injustice for a minute. What are they? There are, there are many, but um, one of the things that Amos points out, uh, in the book of Amos, he points out the barrier of religious hypocrisy. Look with me in verses 21 uh, through 23. I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies, even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them, and the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Alec Moy Moyer in his commentary on this says, there cannot be a passage in the Bible more deliberate in expressing divine distaste than this. God says, I hate this kind of religious activity that has no concern for justice and for the love of other people. You know, we can try to present ourselves. We can try to rip present ourselves uh, with all of our religious piety but not be doing the work of loving our neighbors. And it is not just Amos, though. Um, it is not just Amos who has something to say about this. Jesus does, too. Jesus, in Luke 20, or in Luke eleven forty two, Jesus says, But woe to you Pharisees, you who tithe mint and rue and every herb and neglect justice and the love of God. See, justice is fruit that is produced not only not out of our religiosity, our piety, but out of our relationship with God. Now, I want to be careful uh, so you don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that uh, doing justice brings us into a worthy status with God. That doing justice is what brings us into a relationship with God. Not at all. But justice does flow from your relationship with God. If you have met the God of justice, it will flow out of your life. Um, this, according to the book of James, is one of the ways that we know true religion. What true faith is, is how we live it out. So one barrier to doing justice is our own our religiosity, our own self-righteous piety. Uh, another barrier is idolatry. And the context that Amos is writing in is, is that Israel, the people of God, have begun to worship idols in their culture. And this is part of the problem and a barrier to, to justice that Amos addresses. Idols are, are simply those things in our lives that we give priority to over God. So maybe, um, maybe we uh, have excuses for not doing the hard work of justice. And we don't have time. We don't have the resources. We don't know what to do, right? But maybe, uh, maybe for some there's an underlying idol of fear or an underlying uh, idol of seeking comfort that hinders us from doing the work of justice. Our priorities 
keep us from living out our faith in the world or, or other, having other priorities other than God keep us from doing the work of God in the world. Now, you know, I want to be careful here, too, because the work of justice can become an idol in itself. Doing justice is a biblical command, but when it's treated as an ultimate issue, uh, allowing it to define your identity instead of flowing out of your relationship, out of your identity uh, in Christ, then that's when it becomes an idol. So there are hindrances to doing justice. So what hope is it that we have that leads us to do justice? What is the motivator and hope we have? Verse uh, 15, again, it's not printed there, but it, it tells us that God will be gracious to a remnant. Now, what does this mean? Well, throughout the biblical storyline, throughout the, the narrative, uh, God is always pursuing his people. He's always pursuing us who turn away from him. But he pursues his people until he finds one who came and is the only faithful one. This one is, uh, is faithful. He's the one who comes into the world and lives his life loving people, loving the poor, preaching the good news to the poor. He is the one who did justly. But he came and he suffered an unjust death in order that we might be redeemed. Jesus is the one who came and lived a life of perfect justice for you and me, taking the judgment that we deserve upon himself. He came and took the punishment we deserve for our injustices. Jesus bears all the just wrath of God. In other words, Jesus, God in the flesh, became marginalized for us. And this is good news. It is good news for those who need hope. And it is good news for those of us who, who long to see justice, but know we have failed at doing it. It is this grace that makes the difference in our lives so that justice flows out into the world. Now is the time. Now is the time to see justice roll down like waters. We don't need to become more religious. We need hearts that are turned toward God and as a result are turned toward other people who have been robbed of their dignity for far too long, who even fear walking out of their door walking out of their house each day. When we experience the grace and mercy of God, we are turned toward Him and our hearts are changed. Do you want to see a just world? Do you want to see justice roll down? The hearts of God's people must be changed. Who can change the hearts of people? Not us. We are helpless to change ourselves. But God can change us, and he changes our hearts by the outpouring of his grace and spirit into our lives. Jesus came to bring healing, healing for the weak, healing for the marginalized. He came to save the helpless. He came for us to change us. So out of God's grace, that he's given to you. Step out, serve, and speak up for those who are most vulnerable. But may we do this in the best way possible as the holy, gracious, loving, and merciful Spirit of God flows into our lives in order that it flows out into the lives of others. Let me pray for us. Lord, help us to live a life of justice that flows out of a relationship with you. So help us to know you more and to live out our faith in this world for your glory and your namesake. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen.